Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today we're gonna to be going over the 10 best handling cars in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now I just wanna say before we get into this list, obviously I could probably pick 10 supercars that are the best handling vehicles in the game because they just handle better than everything else. However, with this list, I wanted to diversify it a little bit and include a couple of different cars from a couple of different categories. So there are gonna be cars from several different categories on this list. Obviously, there might be better handling cars than uh, you know some of the first ones that you're going to see on this list but as far as but i think it's far more interesting to go over several different cars in several different categories rather than just the 10 best supercars because you know you're going to get the same list as my top 10 fastest supercars video if that were the case so anyways let's go ahead and get into it starting off with number 10. at number 10 we have the emperor vector Coming in at $1.3 million if you have the trade price and almost $1.8 million if you do not have the trade price, the Emperor Vector is a very highly customizable car in GTA with some very, very good performance. This is also a car that's in the sports category and the tuners subcategory, meaning that you can use it in sports class races, as well as the tuners subcategory of races, which is kind of cool. The Vector is all wheel drive, so it does have very good grip throughout the corners it is also pretty agile. You can change directions with this thing pretty decently and the car will keep a lot of grip and the chance of spinning out will be relatively low, I would say. The only thing that I don't like about the Vector is it is a little bit of a heavier car. It definitely feels a little bit heavier, which kind of goes against the agility that it has. I think if this thing was a little bit lighter, it definitely would be a much better car. With that being said though, it is still fantastic. Definitely one that I would recommend picking up if you are looking for a cheaper, great handling car. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on to number nine. At number nine, we have the Vapid Dominator ASP in the muscle category. The ASP is a very, very good handling muscle car. Definitely one of the best. I would put it in my top three best handling muscle cars, maybe even top two. The ASP is another car that doubles as a tuners DLC vehicle, so it can be used in the tuners subcategory of races as well as the muscle category races as well. It's about the exact same price as the Emperor Vector coming in at $1.3 million all the way up to just under $1.8 million as well. So it's pretty much the exact same price. So if you're trying to choose between these two, definitely, uh, definitely don't be discouraged by the price because they're almost the exact same price. The ASP for a muscle car handles absolutely phenomenally. It definitely has a little bit of an oversteer bias, a little bit more so than the Emperor Vector, but I don't think that this is necessarily a bad thing. If anything, the slight oversteer that the ASP has will help to turn in a little bit quicker in some corners, which can definitely work to the advantage of the driver of the ASP. Like the Vector, it has some great customization as well, which can help with the handling depending on the upgrades that you put on the car, making it just that much better. So anyways, that's it for the ASP at number nine. Let's move on. To number eight. At number eight, we have the Bravado Buffalo STX, which you guys might have seen coming. It is, of course, in the muscle car category, and it goes for $1.6 million if you have the trade price to $2.1 million if you do not have the trade price. The STX is regarded as the best handling muscle car in Grand Theft Auto Online, as well as the best muscle car for stunt racing within the muscle car category as well. The STX's handling is just, it's completely unrivaled. It is so good. This car has so much grip. You can pretty much throw it at any corner and it will go around it. You know, I would compare the handling of the STX to some sports cars in GTA. That is just how good this thing really, really is. It might even be better than some supercars, I would say as well. It definitely has a faster lap time around a lot of circuits than supercars would as well so it's a very good handling car also coupled with that the acceleration is pretty good as well as the top speed with the stx so really it's an overall great car and it's kind of no doubt that it's the fastest muscle car in the game for circuit racing it does have a spoiler option so that will definitely help to improve the traction of the vehicle so if you are planning on getting one of these the spoiler option is a must-have i would say anyways that is pretty much it for number eight let's move on to number seven at number seven we have the ubermacht cypher which is another tuners dlc vehicle which means it can be used in the sports category as well as the tuners subcategory for those tuners class races. The Cypher is a little bit cheaper, which got it a little bit higher on the list. It only goes for $1.2 million on the low end, up to $1,550,000 on the high end, depending on if you have the trade price or not. The Ubermock Cypher is one of those cars that you can throw at pretty much any corner and it will go around it as fast as you possibly can. The Cypher is very well balanced, I would say. I would say that the weight distribution on this thing must be like close to 50-50, must be close to perfect because that's how this car feels. It just feels perfect in the corners. 
It is absolutely phenomenal. It has so much grip. The downforce feels great as well. And the weight of the car is really, really nice. It doesn't get dragged into the corner because of its you know, absurd weight. It'll stay pretty much exactly where you want it to be throughout the corner that you're going into. It also does well in sort of slaloms where you go back and forth different directions, changing direction over and over again. It will do really well in that sort of scenario as well. The Ubermark Cypher definitely deserves to be on this list. It is truly one of the best handling vehicles from the Tuners DLC, and it's gotta be one of the best handling sports cars in the entire game as well. At number six, we have the Grotti Itali GTO, which you guys might have seen coming. This is regarded as the fastest sports car in Grand Theft Auto Online. In fact, this car is actually faster than the vast majority of the supercars category in Grand Theft Auto Online, which is kind of crazy considering that it is in the sports category. The Italia GTO is all-wheel drive, so it does get a nice launch, but of course that all-wheel drive also helps in the corners, helps to power through the corners and power out of the corners as well with the good acceleration. It helps to keep the front end tied in with the rear end as well, making it pretty seamless when you're going around corners. A lot of people don't seem to like the handling of the Italia GTO because it does struggle with bumps slightly, but that is also one of the Italia GTO's sort of superpowers is that the bumps actually make this car quite a lot faster. This car is really the whole package. It's kind of similar to the Ubermach Cypher where it's very good in every single way, except it's just better than the Cypher in every single way. Definitely look into the Italia GTO if you guys are interested. This thing goes for $1.9 million and for that price, it destroys the sports category. So definitely check this thing out if you guys are interested. With that being said, on to number five. Next up at number five, we have the Fister Comet SR. Coming in at $1.1 $145,000, which is an absolute bargain price considering how good this car is handling wise. It is a lot cheaper than most of the other vehicles on this list. In fact, it is actually the cheapest vehicle on the entire list with some of the best performance. This was formerly a top 10 fastest sports car around a circuit in Grand Theft Auto Online. In fact, it might even still be. I am planning to make a video on the fastest sports cars in Grand Theft Auto Online, which I will have to do some research, but I think this thing might just still be ever so slightly within the top 10, but we will have to see. What I can tell you though is that the Fister Comma SR has absolutely phenomenal handling. That is why it's on this list. Of course, this thing is very light and it has a ton of downforce on the rear end. It definitely feels what I imagine a 911 would feel like in real life, which of course this thing is based off of a 911. So that would kind of make sense. And I think that Rockstar's done this very, very well. This car can go super fast and keep its grip in pretty much any corner. Now it will kind of start to step out on you if you get into a corner that's just a little bit too sharp and you're going a little bit too fast, but that's kind of the same with any car. I'd say the majority of the time the Fister Common SR definitely has some of the best handling in the entire game. The rear tires are also pretty wide which helps to keep it in check and keep it from sliding out. It does feel very similar to a 911 though that you can kind of tell the weight of the car is over the rear axle and not on the front because the turn in with this car is very good, it's very light, but then the rear end when you start to get it out of shape it will just kind of come around on you and there's not much that you can do with it, similar to a 911 in real life. So I think that Rockstar kind of nailed the handling of this car honestly. It's very good but sometimes it just can get a little bit out of hand on you. Your goal is to just not quite let it get out of hand, not quite take it to that point, but just, you know, know your limit, play within it type of thing. That's it for the Fist of Comet SR, on to number four. At number four, we have the Ocelot Locust coming in at $1,600,000. This is a car that is super underrated by the community. I don't think I've ever seen another human being driving an Ocelot Locust in this game. And that is truly a crying shame because the Locust is one of the best handling one of the most impressive cars I've driven in the last year in GTA. This thing is insanely good. This is based off of some type of Lotus. I'm not exactly sure of the name off the top of my head right now. It might be like the, I wanna say like the 111 or something like that. Maybe even the Lotus Elise, but I don't know if there's an Elise that doesn't have a roof. But anyways, it is very, very good. Like Lotus in real life, it does have a super low weight to it, which is definitely why the handling is so phenomenal with this car. And you can feel it when you're driving this thing. You can tell that this thing 
weighs not very much. It's a very twitchy car and when you first drive it, it might be a little bit hard to get used to, but once you get used to this car, once you kind of master it, the handling becomes just absolutely sensational. It's perfect. You can throw this thing at a lot of corners and it will go around almost all of them, almost all of the time, especially once you get used to the car. And as you get more and more used to the car, it will handle better and better for you. The Locust is definitely one that I would recommend looking into for 1.6 mil. You can't really go wrong with it. Just make sure that you have some of these other cars a little bit before that because the overall performance of the Locust isn't that great. The acceleration is like decent. Top speed though is pretty weak. The handling is definitely this thing's strongest suit for sure. Definitely the reason that I would recommend picking up the car is just for the handling. Throw this thing in a mountain road and you will have some fun. That's for sure. With that being said, let's move on to number three. And number three, we have the Dubachi Wagner. The Wagner is a car that is really insane because it should be out of the top 10 fastest supercars by now because this thing has been out for a long time. I think this has been out since 2017 and it is somehow still one of the fastest supercars in Grand Theft Auto Online. And the reason for this is just because it's the whole package. You get a great top speed of 126 miles per hour. You get fantastic downforce with this, and you also get a pretty low weight with the car as well, meaning that you can throw this thing at pretty much any corner as fast as you want, and it will go around it. It's similar to the Locust in the fact that it's a little bit twitchy because it is so light, but the difference is with the Wagner is the twitch will never turn into a spin out or anything like that. This car will go around any corner you throw it at as fast as you can possibly take it and it will not spin out on you. It's insane how good this car is and it's easy to see why it's within the top 10 fastest supercars in Grand Theft Auto Online. But the best part about the Wagner is that it goes for only $1.6 million, which is crazy to think about because the performance of this vehicle is insane. And for that price tag, it's like the bargain of the century because it really is one of the best supercars in the entire game. On most tracks, the Wagner will give almost anything around for its money. So with that being said, that's it for the Wagner. Great handling car, definitely one of the highest recommendations that I can give, but we do have a couple cars that are just ever so slightly better. On to number two. And number two, we have the Progen Emirates. You guys might've seen this coming. This car goes for $2,750,000, which is a huge jump in price. That's almost double the price of the Wagner, which is crazy, but the Emirates is just ever so slightly better, I would say. The Emirates is kind of regarded as the fastest supercar in Grand Theft Auto Online for racing, especially on last gen. On current generation consoles, the HSW cars obviously kind of destroy it, but I still think that this thing's handling is one of the best features about the car. Now, something that is key to know about the Emirates is the smaller the spoiler you pick, the better this car seems to handle. So keep that in mind if you guys are picking up an Emirates. Don't be afraid to put on a smaller spoiler. Although the big spoilers look really cool, they are gonna kind of hinder the handling of the car a little tiny bit. The Progen Emirates has one of the best turn-ins on a car that I, I've ever seen in Grand Theft Auto Online. It might even be better than the number one car on this list. It's so, so quick to turn in. The front end on this car is insane. It'll turn in and it will stay gripped for the majority of the time. It might start to kind of spin out on you, but the Emirates will catch itself a lot of the time meaning that you can go around corners very, very fast in this car. It's also got some pretty good downforce, similar to the Wagner, but the car is just a little bit heavier, so it kind of struggles in maybe tighter sort of corners. Tighter and faster corners will definitely be a little bit more of a struggle in the Emirates than the Wagner, but I think overall the Emirates is just the better car. It has a higher top speed, definitely has better acceleration, and the downforce is quite similar, but the Emirates is just insanely good handling-wise, and once you get your car dialed in and set up the way that it should be, then the handling of this car will truly come through and you'll see just how good the Progen Emirates really, really is. That's it for the Emirates, on to the number one best handling car in Grand Theft Auto Online. We have the Benefactor LM87. This was added with the Criminal Enterprises DLC last summer and it is absolutely phenomenal. It goes for $2.9 million, which is extremely steep, but it's worth every penny because the LM87 is insane. This car is so fast. The downforce that this car has is like the downforce the Emirates and the Wagner have combined, plus a little bit more. That's how this car feels when you're racing it around. The grip is just off the charts. This car is so, so good. On top of this, it's also got a speed glitch if you're on PC, 
where your screen will start kind of vibrating a little bit and the LM87 will just absolutely take off and it's to do with the FPS you get. This doesn't work on console, so I will just say that. It's only on PC, but it is very interesting. You can really push the limits of the LM87 when you're on PC with this car. The downforce is just insane. The handling is very good. The response is great in the corners. It's very light. The acceleration's great as well. And you can keep the throttle on with the LM87 throughout any corner you go around, and it's gonna go around the corner perfectly fine. So the LM87 truly is the best handling car in Grand Theft Auto Online by a long shot, I would say. The Emirates and the Wagner definitely uh, can kind of hold a candle to the LM87, but it's, I don't know. It, the LM87 is just, it's just different. It's purely just different. So if you guys are interested, the LM87 for $2.9 million is the best handling car in Grand Theft Auto Online right now anyway guys that is it for the best handling cars in gta online thank you so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed the video dislike if you didn't of course subscribe to my channel if you guys are new and i will see you all in the next one until then take care peace